Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome to episode 3 of Armstrait Tycoon Tanks with the Interbellum Tanks. I have acquired this trophy, the Tierhaus Führung B. This is a nice German creation and I do believe it does fairly well. It does only come with machine guns, so hard firepower as the game calls it, i.e. bunker busting or engaging other tanks. Yeah, it doesn't do that that well. At least not yet, because now that I have it fully engineered, or rather <laughs> fully reverse engineered, I can make it my own. So let's see what sort of uh, unholy creations we can make with this new German vehicle. Or rather, formerly known German vehicle. Now you might be inclined to go into the design bureau, but you don't have to. You can first engineer the vehicle yourself. So this means that you'll be able to upgrade all parts of the vehicle if and when you desire. You don't have to. For example, this one is using FHA steel. And according to the game, that is Mark III, so that's pretty advanced. Um, when it comes to this type of riveting, they have reinforced headless rivets, which apparently is uh, less safe for the crew than, for example, a bolted assembly. But I do expect that this thing... Yeah, look at that, the volume. Uh, this thing takes up less volume by a lot compared to that bolted assembly. Bolted assembly is on a Mark II. Uh, there is improved riveted assembly which gets almost the same stats, like this thing takes up slightly more. I think this one is just the best. As for the vision port, this thing has a steel slit that the soldiers can see through. It's not very big, their visibility is going to be fairly limited, but again, I think it's the best one we have at the moment, because I'm still researching more stuff. Even ventilation is something you have to keep in mind, and here the Germans have lapsed, or at least this other competitor of mine. Because the way that they are using the ventilation is uh, not very good. At least I have Mark II options. Which give me, um, compared here, some slightly better operational range. This one gives you more structure. So I believe structural integrity. Uh, regarding the rest, crew comfort here is fairly low. This one gives you more crew comfort. And this one gives you even more crew comfort. And some nations really, really want a comfortable situation for their crew. Um, I need to make a custom design for this. Here we go. So for this one, we're going to go with the improved crew one, the ventilation fans. And when it comes to their door, I think they're already using the better one. The crew safety is slightly better with this one. And so is the structure, but the weight is almost double. I do want to have the reinforced door though. So that's going to be the better door for that vehicle. Now let's go back to the design, because there are probably a lot of other things that I can still improve upon. So this is that part that we were just talking about. Then we have the engine. And the only one that's currently available, uh, yes, I'm going to create a new tank component, is this one. This is the Daimler that I pulled out of that vehicle, that I reverse engineered. However, there are probably options for me to improve this as well. Time to get the engineers busy. So this is a new draft. What we're currently using is a tier 2 part, whereas we have tier 4. Again, it's a heavier part, but considering the properties here, like this thing is apparently very loud. It has a minus 3 stealth rating. This one has a, a 4. I don't exactly know just how much stealth really does. But I do believe that higher values are generally better. So I'm going to go with the Mark IV part that I have available. Flywheel-wise, again, they're only using a Mark II. I can go to Mark IV, which gives this thing... Uh, yeah, this has a pretty low obstacle trench width, so this can, can uh, maneuver trenches better. It does, however, have a slightly worse obstacle slope angle. So going up slopes might be a little bit more difficult. Regarding other parts, like I'm not really looking into Mark or yeah Mark One parts because I think they're just going to be worse. So Mark Four parts probably better. We have an atomizer, an atomizer carburetor again Mark Two, but we have a Mark Three twin barrel carburetor, and then we have a thick panel radiator Mark Two. We're going to push that to Mark Four, and the inline transmission. Well, it's fairly straightforward Mark Four. So there is the new engine. This thing compared to its previous iteration, which was the V1, is lighter. 
And I think, yeah, it takes up less volume. So in that sense, it is better. Uh, am I looking at the right one? No, I'm not looking at the right one. Where is it? Down here. There we go. Uh, it is much heavier, in fact. It is much heavier. But the attribute sum, so the sum of its parts, if you will, is higher. Of course, with more complex parts also comes a more, well, more manpower intensive project. But that's fine. I'm going to assign this to one of these sets of engineers. And I also want that uh, base frame to start getting engineered by the gentleman. So I'm going to assign this one too. Unfortunately, I only have five staff here. So we're first going to have to visit our little, in, uh, our little office over here, the admin office, and hire a few more workers. This is, however, engineers. This is the more, let's say, the more skilled labor. And I need those guys fairly quickly to start helping out with that engineering issue. All right, let's get that engineered. So these guys are going to work on this. It's going to only take 12 days now. Excellent. Back to design. What else are we going to need? Well, we're going to need tracks. I can either use my own Whippet tracks, which look a little out of place, or I can use the Leichtewagen uh, tracks that the thing has come with. The difference here is fairly notable, because if you look at the displacement or the, the mass limit, it's going to be 13,000. Whereas if I put the Whippet tracks on, it's going to be 16,000. So this does mean that their vehicle can field more. Like it can, it can have more weight on it. As for the turret, uh, I'm going to create a new component. So yes, I want to have a draft of a new component. And unfortunately, I don't think I can fit a machine gun or anything bigger than a machine gun in there. So yeah, we're just going to be looking at uh, tier, tier ones all over the place. That's fine. Uh, do we have a completed machine gun? Yes, there we go. So I'm pretty much stealing, if you will, or uh, maybe be kinder, uh, learning from a specific design from our competitors and using that against them to a certain extent. Uh, yes, I want to save the design changes and uh, let's have a look at this turret. Because this turret's still using wrought iron, which is a bit weird, seeing as we have FHA steel. They took some shortcuts in crew protection here. Assembly-wise, uh, we're going to go to Mark III, Improved Riveted Assembly, or that Riveted Headless Assembly. The difference here being uh, crew safety is minus 3 or minus 2. Crew comfort here is higher. We're going to go with this one. And then we have the circular turret hatch, Mark II. I can make that a wire turret hatch. And I think that's the better option. I'd love to assign this as well, but unfortunately, there are no slots. I'm going to have to wait until one of these projects completes. What else have I been up to? Well, I sold a whole bunch of tanks to the Ottoman Empire, and I'm now working on a fairly large order for, what was it, Germany? Yes, I'm building 68 frigates for Germany. And I have another order for 24 frigates for the Danish. Um, sorry, the Swedish. I loop, believe we're almost... Yeah, there we go. We're just about finished with that. So I can ship those guys out. And seeing as I have plenty of time, it doesn't need to be quick. So I can just... Look at that. We got 40 days. I can just afford to be cheap. So 24 tanks. 24. Let's go with that. Oh. What? Oh, never mind. I already delivered two. Yes, that's right. I already delivered two just to get a little bit ahead. So I can go with a low chance or a low safety one. Uh, 10 days plus six is still fine. So that's that contract complete. I've also been upgrading my warehouse a bit. Uh, ordered a whole lot of resources, which did bite into my budget a fair amount. But it does mean that at the moment, I'm pretty good for resources. The Research Bureau is working hard on getting the auxiliary turret fixed or engineered, no, researched. And that should allow for the building of additional tanks, or at least the design of them. Now we're building another 20 tanks over here. That is part of one design line, but of course we're going to need more. So based on what I have, plus what I need, like we have three, we're building another 20, so that's 23, and the Germans want 68. So, uh, gentlemen, <laughs> you're not going to be going on any vacations anytime soon. 
We're going to be building a lot of tanks. Unfortunately, I don't have the manpower for that. Because in 99 days, the Germans are going to be fairly annoyed. So maybe I set that deadline a little too close. Uh, yeah, there's 90 in contracts. But that is also counting the one that I've already completed. So don't look at the 90, because half of those are already done. Let's go to 30 days. Um, I can actually up the amount of people here. There we go. That's 30 days. So that's 30 for 20 tanks. Yeah, we're just going to have to crank out as many as possible. But that means that I don't have enough staff available for this line. It's going to take 149 days, which is way too long. All right, well, off you go. I do believe we just hired all the workers we could find. No, we didn't. Okay, there we go. I oh, hired the engineers, right. So now assign those people to the line and be quick about it. Just type the maximum number, 87 days. Uh, we're not quite getting this thing done, but in 30 days, that first production line is getting freed up. So with those people, we can start building additional tanks. And those 450 people are gonna work very, very hard. Because the beatings will continue until morale improves. There we go. Research storage has been upgraded. I can now hold 300,000. I have about half. Um, my iron deposits are going very, very, very quickly. Because this is one hungry tank factory. And we need more iron. So I'm going to be buying all the iron here. Um, the rest of it is pretty good. Maybe some medium carbon steel. Like give me 12,000 or so. Order that from Oceania. It's going to take a while. Does uh, Asia also have some steel? Yeah, but not much. Like Europe has 32k available. Middle East? Oh, the Middle East has it for a decent price. Decent enough anyway. 10,600. Uh, sign the order. And that should at least keep the furnaces quite happy because there's more iron to be had. Contract complete. There you go. We're back up to 4 million. That's very nice. Engineering completing momentarily. Ah, engineering complete. Excellent. So now I can get the other processing done that I still need to get fixed, which was, I believe, no, it was not a primary weapon. Was it an engine that I was fixing up? Or a running gear? What did I have for that tank? Design. The loading screens, by the way, have improved a lot. They used to be fairly slow. And thankfully, they're now a lot faster. Ah, oh, it was the turret. Correct. Turret. Let's get that fixed. All right, then. Two more days and we're done. New tank revealed. The Daimler Motorengesellschaft has completed a new design tank for the stopgap tank. <laughs> Very creative. All right. Let's increase our research. Let's see what else we can get. Because now I have the auxiliary turret. We have the hemispherical infantry turret. And I might might want to start looking into uh, mobility a bit more or firepower because I've kind of lapsed on firepower a bit. We can get a fixed, a mixed operation machine gun, a modernized operation machine gun in the form of the Lewis Mark II. And eventually, of course, we'll be able to get anti-aircraft heavy machine guns in the Hotchkiss Mark III, but that'll be a little bit of time. As for the adjusted anti-tank gun, this is far more, let's say, anti-tank focused. This is anti-infantry. Uh, well, this is hard power. Let's go with researching the APC round. All right, time to go over to the design bureau because I want to see if I can now actually get the parts that I want. Because the hole that I found out or that I uh, researched was the heavy independent. The heavy independent version um, one is pretty bland. Like There's nothing much special to it. Uh, just Delete that one. The Heavy Mark II. Oh, I still have to engineer a whole bunch. See, now I actually have these turrets. Because before, I only had these armored seals. So the tank would look a little bit like this. Uh, that, if you ask me, does not very tanky look to me. So instead, we're going to add the turrets. But this is where that comes in. I want to make sure that that turret is the best it can be. Because then I can put that turret in all of the spots, except for the main one, which is the infantry turret. So for that, we're also going to have to create a new component. And that's that big, big infantry turret. Supposedly, this houses three machine guns. So we'll have lots and lots and lots of machine guns on this one tank. 
As for the engine, um, this is a big girl. This tank is very, very heavy. So let's also make sure that it has a decent amount of mobility. Right now it has, um, I think I can benefit from a, what, 150 power horsepower engine. I'm still not exactly sure what all of these stats mean. I mean, higher is better, obviously, but a road speed of eight, <laughs> cross country speed of 17. We also have the Liberty V12, which should have it substantially more firepower or engine power. But of course that engine is way heavier. So you're leaving less room for other parts. Uh, if I go for the V2, we're getting far less road speed on that one. All right, let's go back to the beginning. What do I want this tank to be? I want this tank to be a breacher. Unfortunately, I probably cannot add anything other than a machine gun, but I want it to be decently fast. So we're going to have to have an engine that's providing a pretty high amount of horsepower. And with that engine, make sure that this tank gets good road speed and good cross-country speed. So that's what we're going for. Create a component. Yes. Engineer the component. Uh, yes, I want to save the design as something new. So we need a lot of horsepower for this one. Uh, that was the... Here we are. The Liberty V12 Mark III, or the V3. This one already uses the Mark IV. This one uses Mark IV. This one uses Mark... Three. This one uses Mark IV, and this one also uses Mark IV. There's not a whole lot to improve about this thing. Okay, never mind. We don't need a new engine. We can just drop on the V2 that we have. So that's nice. That saves me a bit of time. There. Engine set. Uh, regarding the turret, let's have a look at that one. Is this thing automatically upgraded to have everything bested or not? Because it's the Mark III... You also got those improved riveting, but I think this one regarding crew comfort is better. Uh, you also got the better crew comfort here. Does it come at any expense, really? I think these are pretty similar. You're getting some slightly better structure here. Like this, this crew comfort is very good. Um, volume, it takes up a lot more volume. We're going to stick with this one. And then we can also add the type of steel. So that's going to be the FHA. It's going to be the most advanced stuff. Unfortunately, again, all my lines are busy. So while I can save it, I can't actually engineer it. What I would like is like an engineering queue so that you can queue up a lot of those engineering things and make sure that it's always busy. That you're always going, oh, right, that's what I was engineering. Because now I might forget to keep that thing going. Austria-Hungary also wants tanks. Yes, look, people, I'm busy enough as is trying to supply the Germans. A new trophy has appeared again. The Tier Ausführung C. Is that not the one we have? I think more people are starting to capture this thing. No, it's the Type B. Okay, in that case, I want it. I want to see what they have. Austria-Hungary, talk to me. The Type C. We're going to buy that. We're going to reverse engineer it, tear it apart, look for the better parts, add those to the list. Yeah, it's just the same thing all over again. It might be the Tier C, but it's not anything different. So that was a nice 144k down the drain. But then again, I consider that a bit of uh, a cost of doing business. Sometimes you might get an upgrade, sometimes you might not. All right, back to the design, because we were still looking to build that other tank, this one. And now we have everything engineered. So now I should be able to add some crew members. We're going to need a commander. That gentleman goes over there. We're going to need one driver. We need two gunners. And we need a mechanic. Unfortunately, we need apparently more of a mechanic than we can actually have. Oh, sorry, you need to be mechanic there just a flat mechanic and you can be a gunner okay done regarding expendables um we're gonna go with ap no steel core cartridges given the best firepower and yeah i cannot do that i can also add luminate rounds or luminous rounds if there's any real stat difference that is 
Like, I'm supposing these are tracer rounds of sorts, but I'm not sure. Let it fuel. No, we're going to go with aviation fuel and crude oil. There. So that is the, the LK2. Um, is there anything we can call this thing? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Can I still remove this and put this back? No, it's now too heavy. The stuff that I've put on there is too heavy relative to what I wanted. So we're still waiting for this thing to complete and then we should be able to build this thing. Um, so this is the LK2 Alpha. And it's basically a hybrid. It's half Whippet and it's half German vehicle. Oh crap, I forgot the engineering. See, there you go. There you go. I forgot the engineering just because I was already working on something else. We were working on getting a whole lot of parts engineered for the heavy independent. So let's edit this in engineering. And yeah, I think we had the best stuff here. I can still add steel if you pretty please. Uh, over here we can have more ammo storage. Let's make sure we get that. And over here additional fuel storage so this thing can go farther. Regarding shell storage, it's already Mark 1, Mark 1. Ventilation is Mark 2, that's fine. Uh, the hatch is Tier 2. Then we have this thing as Tier 2, and we have the headlights. Excellent. Save that, heavy independent, engineer it. And this is really the gameplay loop that you're seeing here. You're going to the design bureau and then figuring out, oh crap, I'm missing something, and you go to the engineering bureau. Now I have the production complete for this, and I have the turret complete for that. So first back into the designer, where we're immediately going to start the design thing on this, 26 days. Uh, and now I can also go back to the heavy independent and use another slot to get engineered. This thing was already set to my standards. Unfortunately, we don't have enough staff available. We need more people. Assign the staff. Go to the admin office, hire more staff, go back to the uh, design bureau and make sure that we have more people there. There, 37 days. All right, now we had a pop-up saying that there were a couple of tanks ready. We have 30 frigates ready out of the uh, massive order that we need. First, I'm going to make sure that this line gets all the attention that it requires. So we're gonna go to 450, it's 37 days. So we're going to be building another 20 tanks, making a total of 50, and we still have 63 days. So I still need to add 13 tanks to my lineup. This means we're going to add 13 more frigates for a total of 38 days, and we should well fall within the parameters of the German government. Excellent. It didn't look good for a minute there, but I think we'll get it done. Uh, is there additional staff available for hire for the main factory floor? Yes. Go and hire those people and put them to work. And yes, my staffing cost is definitely going up. So be it. I'm considering that, again, to be a cost of doing business. And I want to make sure that my tanks get finished faster. Because the more tanks I finish, and especially the faster I do it, the more likely I am to get a very big payday. And I do believe that the contract with the Germans was an extremely big payday. Look, we're starting to make 2.7 million from that as well as a lot of reputation. So the reputation is useful because it might open up additional um, administrators to my buildings. Seeing as my buildings are still going to be about a month, I don't really want to participate in any additional contracts. I don't think it's going to work that well. I do want to get another shipment of iron brought in. Can never have too much of that, and especially due to the lead times. I think I have, uh, <laughs> I haven't emptied the market, but I'm definitely going through this at a pretty fast rate. Get it from there. And get it from Africa then. There. Okay, so that's another bunch of iron coming in. More where that came from, please. Okay, proceed. All right, the tank is ready. Let's see if the uh, the tank track has been changed. I don't really expect so. This is that new LK2, four different machine guns. So we have a decent amount of firepower. 
there were a couple of defects discovered in the production of this tank. So I'm definitely going to have to have um, the proving grounds have a look at this thing, fix the defects, and make sure this tank is as good as it's going to get. I really hope that with this tank, I have filled a bit of a gap in my lines. Because some of my tanks are fast but lack protection. And some of my tanks are uh, very heavy, but because of that, they lack speed. And sometimes a customer wants a fast, relatively heavily armored unit. And that's unfortunately not something I can always provide. There's another target here. Yeah, so shooting targets on the move, check. Going over obstacles, pretty decent. It's not exactly a need for speed tank, but then again, regarding the engine that's in here, I'm not surprised. This is powered by a 60 horsepower engine. It's not exactly designed to be a speed car. I think anti-tank capabilities are extremely lacking on this vehicle. Um, it was not designed to have that particular role, but apparently against that target, it can do it. Surprisingly well, I should add. Rate of fire is definitely good. Oh, we actually got another one? Surprising. Okay, let's switch to a different machine gun. Yeah, I see this thing just mowing through trenches pretty efficiently, so that's nice. That is very nice. Alright, let's make sure we stay on the road. I really can't wait to just do this with Leopards and Challengers and Leclairs and Abrams. Currently, in this version of the game, you're really playing as the British. And supposedly by the time that the game goes into full release, uh, which I suspect is going to be at the rate of development in a couple years, maybe 2025 at the earliest, you'll also be able, at least I hope so, to play as another nation for starters. So you might be able to pick up French tanks as a start or German tanks. And I think that's going to make it a lot more interesting. Because I don't always want to be building British tanks. There's nothing wrong with British tanks, but I do like a bit of versatility, a bit of diversity in my tanks. It just seems that this thing struggles to get up here. Not a good look for the tank if it can't make it through the track. I'm just thinking about it. No, come on. You got this. No, you don't got this. Okay, so that's a problem. This thing might not have the engine power combined with the bigger tracks to work well enough. But if I go for the old tracks, the parts are too heavy. And that is yet another problem. Oh, maybe? No. <laughs> We're not getting up there. Ah, oh, it was fun. Would have been nice. Right, so that other tank then. Should be able to getting that finished. But that's going to be happening in the next episode. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Um, there's definitely a whole lot more uh, yeah, crazier designs coming up. I have some weird plans. And I'm also looking forward to seeing what the Research Bureau in tandem with the reverse engineering can come up with. So join me next time as we continue our tank engineering journey. Thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. And I'll see you soon for more.